In this week's video, we've got a whole host of weird and wacky indie gems coming your way. We've got a game that looks like a Tim Burton stop motion movie, a puzzle platformer that blends art with science and mathematics, and we also have a top-down shooter where you battle cosmic space invading spiders across curved landscapes. To keep up to date with all things indie gaming, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon to get notifications so you never miss a video. Feel free to comment below on which of the featured indies most interest you, and also don't forget to click the like button if you enjoy the video, as it all helps feed the YouTube algorithm. Onirike is a 3D platformer that harkens back to the days of the N64. You play as Pietro, a strange being with the ability to become invisible in a world where the line between dreams and reality is blurred. It's a twisted fairy tale reminiscent of Tim Burton's stop motion animations such as The Nightmare Before Christmas and Corpse Bride. Our hero, Pietro, has been trapped in a loop, waking up each day without memories of anything that has gone before. After helping a clown at the circus, you embark on a quest to obtain the key for the Well of Truth to finally get answers and break the cycle once and for all. It's an intriguing story with a suitably bizarre cast of characters, including a rather disturbing pink blob milking a small cow. And so begins an open world adventure where you need to find seven parts of the truth key from an interconnected overworld map. The mechanics of the game are a little confusing at first. Time management is important. Pietro needs a special plant, Gypsophila, to exist in the real world. Without it, he vanishes into thin air and for a short time is able to move invisible. Now, whilst this allows for some interesting stealth mechanics to avoid monsters, or devourers as they're called, you really need to be quick on your feet to find more Gypsophila or else you disappear for good forget everything and begin again at your last save storm. Luckily though you can collect and plant spores allowing you to create your own gypsophila checkpoints and become corporeal again. Pietro for the most part controls well, he can walk, run and jump with new abilities added as the game progresses. There's no combat, gameplay is primarily made up of simple puzzle solving and platforming sections. Some memorable moments include opening a gate made of barbecue ribs and collecting pieces of a giant pizza. As you can probably tell, I really liked Onirike, particularly the sense of discovery you get as you travel to different locations on the map. The story features fully voiced narration and at times feels like a fable being told to a child by a parent. The game world looks gorgeous and is really well designed. If you fancy jumping on giant sausages or rashes of bacon, rolling meatballs along the floor or climbing a giant volcano, give Onirike a try now on the PC via Steam, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One with a PS4 port coming very soon. For this next indie, let's start with some AP Bio. A synapse is a point where electrical and chemical nerve impulses are transmitted in the brain. Think of it as two things communicating with one another. This is the basis of a tale of synapse, the chaos theories, a wonderful puzzle platformer that melds art with science and maths based logic. It's an indie like no other. In the game you take control of Nero and Psy. Nero is a synapsian that can attack enemies and jump around levels. In some ways he reminded me a little of Ori from Moon Studios games. Sai is an airborne character who can move around the screen and pick up objects to help solve puzzles. Controlling both characters at once is surprisingly easy, you use a left stick for one, the right for another, but most puzzles require you to use one at a time. And if you've got a friend and a second controller handy, you can get those synapses working together in co-op mode. Where the game excels is in its puzzles. The world is filled with mathematical problems and equations to solve, in a way I don't think I've ever seen before. Things start off pretty simple, a locked doorway blocks your path, a basic sum is written on the wall. You have to control Nero and hit a switch the right number of times to select the answer and open the door. Later puzzles feature geometric shapes, fractions and algebra. Sai quickly gets the ability to see an alternative reality. By the press of a button, the screen turns orange, revealing hints to solving many of the game's conundrums. It's an educational lesson for sure, but a beautiful and fun one at that. A recurring theme in the game is duality, things communicating and working together. This can be seen through the two protagonists, the two player court mode and even the two planes of reality as mentioned. I'd argue that the game world is symbolic of the brain and by solving the puzzles and connecting with other characters, you're really getting those synapses firing. It really is clever stuff. A tale of synapse is challenging but never impossible. Solving puzzles requires logical thinking, a close examination of the environment, 
and occasionally trial and error. And if you're struggling, there's a handy hint system to put you on the right track. Now coming from a literary background, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed the mathematical elements of the game. So don't be put off if maths is not normally your thing. It really is an indie gem for everyone. And plus, you'll come away from it feeling very clever. A Tale of Synapse, The Chaos Theories is available now on PC and also the Nintendo Switch. For gamers who grew up in the 1980s like me, I imagine Sega's Wonder Boy series will hold special memories. I remember playing the first game in the arcades, although it later got released on the Sega Master System console. Now, the original game was a side-scrolling platformer where you moved from left to right collecting fruit to replenish an ever-depleting time counter. Things slowed down somewhat for the sequels, with Wonder Boy 3, The Dragon's Trap, a series high, and an early example of what would become the Metroidvania genre. The fourth game in the series never saw the light of day in the West, only releasing in Japan in the 1990s on the Sega Genesis. However, a HD remake was in order and it came out last month on consoles, and this week it comes out on Steam. Wonder Boy Asher in Monsterland has similarities to its predecessors and could perhaps be seen as a mix of all of them. Rather than play as the titular Wonder Boy, he plays Asher, a girl on a quest to free four spirits confined by evil forces. Now, compared to modern platformers, combat here is pretty simple and doesn't change much as the game progresses. You have a sword slash, which can be charged for a special attack, and a shield to defend yourself. It's certainly not as varied as the Dragon's Trap or the recent Monster Boy in the Cursed Kingdom game, but it's satisfying nonetheless. Perhaps the most unique aspect of the gameplay is the introduction of a companion, a blue creature called a Pepe Logu, hope that's how you pronounce it, who allows you to glide, double jump, and solve a number of interesting puzzles. <laughs> The new art style of the remake features a striking colour palette, which, along with the simple character designs and new cutscenes, makes it feel like you're playing a cartoon. The game utilises a 2.5D perspective, where you're able to move from the foreground to the background in certain areas. This may be a divisive move for fans of the original, but I rather liked it. Music and sound effects are on point through a fully remastered soundtrack. Anyone familiar with the original games will recognise the noise made when enemies drop coins, it's a lovely and very welcome nostalgic touch. Asher in Monsterland is a lovingly crafted remake. It remains faithful to the original even down to the little bottom jiggles Asher makes as you open a treasure chest. If you enjoy platform games or you're a fan of the series, this is definitely a game worth a look. Get ready! This week's showcase for the Indie Game Collective is Curved Space, a cosmic top-down arcade shooter with twisted level design that allows you to loop around corners as you strategically defeat wave after wave of enemies. It's a novel approach, giving you 360 degrees of control over your spacecraft, similar in some ways to fellow shoot-em-up Super Stardust HD. The graphics are perhaps not the most striking or original, but Curved Space in Motion is a thing of beauty and the gameplay is super satisfying. Typical shooter mechanics are in place, there's plenty of diverse weapons, a speed boost and collectible upgrades. And one really original feature is your ship's lash move. You're able to fire out a sort of electric lasso that allows you to connect enemies to one another or tether them to harvest stations. This is a game that will keep you occupied for some time. There's a campaign mode featuring an interesting story with branching pathways, there's daily challenges, survival and arena mods and more. I particularly like the opening of the campaign mode. Rather than being tacked on, the tutorial is embedded into the story and slowly introduces you to the game's mechanics one by one. A typical level features several waves of mechanical enemies, each requiring different approaches. It may be that you have to harvest spiders, or that you have to destroy a specific radiant variety roaming the battlefield. Whilst the giant bug bosses require strategy and the full use of the twisted landscape to take down. Curve Space is an addictive shooter that has enough features to make it stand out from the crowd. It's out now on Steam, Xbox and PlayStation consoles, with a Switch port due next month. If you're a developer or a publisher, please check out the Indie Game Collective, a curated group of content creators looking to showcase new indie games on their channels. More details on the IGC can be found in the description below. Despite it being a quiet week for indie gaming, there's plenty of hidden gems worth checking out. Here's three for your consideration. 
First then, we have Magnus Failure, a puzzle adventure with a really unique monochromatic art style. Played from an isometric perspective, you take control of a mysterious character isolated from the rest of the world, and after hearing a signal on the radio, you set out on a quest for answers. There's something quite unsettling about this game. The protagonist, for no apparent reason, wears a huge helmet with a bizarre Japanese mask attached to it. There's no real tutorial, it's all about self-discovery through deciphering signs, symbols and codes. And the lonely barren world feels rather claustrophobic as a result of the minimalistic aesthetic. It's definitely a game that will get under your skin. So if you fancy a point and click adventure with a difference, check this one out now on the PC via Steam. Next we have A Strange Hotel, a lovely little pixel art platformer where you use a vacuum to push and pull objects to solve physics puzzles. You're tasked with cleaning up the hotel and can only move to the next level or room once you've disposed of random objects scattered about the place. The more items you clean up, the more you get paid. And you can use your hard earned wages to unlock extra tough levels if you want a challenge. It's all rather bizarre, but a great game for short bursts. This one's available now on the PC via Steam. to hear my voice again, right? And if you think the games haven't been strange enough this week, well, here's another one for you. This is Mango, a surrealist indie first person adventure game based on art and derealization. Explore the idea of a mind losing its grasp with reality as reality turns into a dream and then that dream turns into a nightmare. This one's been out for a while on Steam and Early Access, but it's getting a full release next week. <laughs> And that's it for this week in Indie Gaming. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the Isle of Indies channel and also hit that like button to help feed the algorithm. Until the next video, guys, keep loving indies. <laughs>